Hello, my name is Dark Wolfheart, and today I decided uh, to be taking a look through some of my PS2 games from back in the era. So, we're just going to go through them. I've got about 70 games to go through, and we're going to start with SOS, The Final Escape. Uh, basically, all a game about escaping. So, you're off to work, and there's an earthquake, and uh, you got to escape. That's all I can say, really, about that game. I bought it for, like, less than 10 quid, or maybe I bought three for 20 who knows, it was many years ago since I've uh, bought this, uh, but yeah, it was a fine game, it looked alright, uh, never completed it, uh, yeah, it was just what it is, I think there was one more after this, uh, I have no idea about this, uh, yeah, fine game. The next one we'll be looking at is the classic Final Fantasy Wow. If you want a good RPG, uh, play this game, not this version, uh, play the updated version, which I do have. Which is, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. No, I can't think of what it's called, but it's got all the extras that the Japanese version got and all that. And this was the first time they decided not to do turn based and go for a action battle system. Active dimension battle system. Uh, fine game. Highly recommend Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, next is Hack Infection. Uh, this was part of four games, I think it was. Um, and this is one of them. Now, the only reason I bought this is because I was a huge dot hat fan, and in it, you got the uh, there was an anime as well, so that's the reason I bought this 40 quid back in the day. Eh, uh, that was from game. Uh, nowadays, you'd be paying 80 quid for this. Basically, if you don't know, hack dot hack is basically kids get trapped inside an MMO and they got to figure out how to escape. And yes, this was before uh, Sword Art Online, so. Yeah, it was a fine game. You played an MMO, which was offline, so... Yeah. Oh yeah, there's part one there. It's part one right there. Now there's four parts to it, but I haven't got them all. The next one to be looking at is a Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters. I don't know why I bought this, uh, but Yu-Gi-Oh! was also the, uh, quite big in the early 2000s. Oh, it does say it's got a limited edition uh, official game card inside it. Uh, is it still in here? No, it's not. It's, that 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 is most probably gone. To uh, it's hiding somewhere, most probably. I don't know where because I never collected Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I was always more of a Pokemon fan myself. Uh, but yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so many games, not many places. Right, the next one we're going to look at is Krusty Demons, and as you can see, it was on sale for fifteen pounds. Uh, basically, Krusty Demons are a group of real-life riders, I believe. Uh, I think it's Krusty Demons. Yeah, it must be. And um, they just do tricks, and you just rode around doing insane tricks and uh, stuff like that. If you can see that, if there's not too much shine off everything else. That's uh, alright. Yeah. I remember rightly, I haven't played this for many years. Uh, yeah, it was a fun game, done by Deep Silver. Uh, one of their early games, so if you don't know Deep Silver, they do the um, zombie games nowadays, and I can't remember what the zombie game. Dead Island, this is the Dead Island series. I can't remember, I really cannot remember. Anyway, that's Krusty Demons. The next one is a real classic. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Um, action adventure game where you could rewind time so if you messed up you just click the button and you could rewind the time to go back before you failed very classic game uh back in the day it looked really nice voice acting was really good and they are doing a remake of this game but uh that's not going too well so if you want to know more about that uh, i'll go and look it up on uh other youtube videos but uh, yeah prince of Persia, sands of time definitely a well recommended game next up second sight um, this is done by Free Radical and Code Masters. If you remember Free Radical back in the day, uh, they did some very good games, including Time Splitters. As you can see, it's at the uh, yeah from Free Radical designed the creators of Time Splitter. If you haven't played Time Splitters, uh, one of the best first-person shooters of the uh, early 2000s. Uh, but this was a third person where you could uh, control people's minds and use telekinetic powers to uh, destroy people. Yeah, it was a very fun game, if I remember rightly. And like I say, most of the games I haven't played for like 20 years, so yeah, good game. Next up, everyone's favourite, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Now, if I put these in orders, this wouldn't come up first. It would be uh, a 
completely different Tony Hawks, but oh, I ain't ordering this stuff around. Stuff that. Uh, American Wasteland. Yeah, after the first two, which I will get to eventually. Uh, this came back uh, <coughs> with a bit of better quality. And also it had BMXs this time around, which uh, the only game you could play BMXs on was either Dave Mirror or Matt Hoffman. Uh, which were done by the same one. Matt Hoffman. Oh, you did have a PS2 game. And I do have it? Or I don't. I don't know. I think I have it on the GameCube. But yeah, uh, this was a back to form for Tony Hawks after the um, other Tony Hawks that we get to later. But yeah, great game. I very much enjoyed that. Completed it definitely. Ah, here we are. The Underground series. So this is Tony Hawks Underground 2. And uh, if I look for it, and just bring it out, just give me a second. Ah. The Tony Hawk's Underground series. Uh, what can I, this is when the series took a bit of a turn and went into jackass territory. Actually, most probably noticed down here, this guy here, Bam Magera. Um, very famous back in the day for jackass, skateboarding, stuff like that. Uh, so these games took a turn for the worse or better? I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, they were games. They were fun. I mean, I had my fun. This is the first time you get off a board and walk around and you climb up stuff and different bits and pieces like that. Uh, see some screenshots in the back there. Yeah, very, very of its time. Yeah, let's see. Rocket launchers and fireworks and manners assumed in the Tony Hawk series. Uh, so next we're going on to racing game uh, most probably one of the best racing games on the PS2 <coughs> Burnout Free Takedown I would say it's the best Burnout um, that's been made some might disagree I don't care I think this is the best one this is a way you can just trash car jump on top of them take them out wipe them everything like that uh, makes an arcade racer real speedy I wish they made more of these but no, it's done by EA Games. And we do not like EA Games because they take companies and they destroy them. But at least we can go back and play these classic games. So, yeah, there you are. 10 out of 10 PSW, uh, PlayStation World. So, good game. Next, Freedom Fighters. Uh, there we are from the makers of Hitman 2. Freedom Fighters. Uh, this is another third person. You go around shooting people and. Uh, you have to build a base and stuff, and then you've got to recruit people and bring them back. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty good game. Uh, back in the day. Uh, in Manhattan's darkest hour, citizens cry out for a hero to free their war-torn city from invading forces. There we go. Oh, very interesting stuff. Next up, we're going to take a look at Sonic Riders. When Sonic decided to go into the Mario Kart style of stuff, and... Uh, Slash Tony Hawk's airboarding sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was fun. Most probably not the best game he's ever been in. Although quite recently, uh, he hasn't been in very many good games. There was a sequel to this, uh, which also wasn't. Yeah, no, it's blah. It's something nowadays. It's blah. Next one we're going to look at. Uh, Total Overdose by Edos Montreal. Well, Edos, not Montreal. Um, basically, you just run around. It was a bit like. Um, Max Payne. But uh, just over the top. Sliding and all that. Jumping around, shooting, getting multipliers and uh, stuff like that. Good game, though. Black is the next one we're looking at. Now this first person shooter, um, coming out at the end of the PlayStation 2, was nothing like ever, anything ever before. This game was amazing. The graphics uh, for the PS2 game, I know you can't see it, there's the camera, uh, I know you can't see the graphics very well. <coughs> yeah, um, this is amazing. You can play it today, it's on the Xbox, Li uh, Xbox Game Store. Uh, so I recommend if you want some classic old first person shooter, Play black. Just a bit of cut there. Uh, how did we get some water? So the next game we'll look at is why I bought a PS2 to be with. 
but I'm a big huge Jurassic Park fan and uh, this came out Jurassic Park Operation Genesis um, dream it build it and survive it so basically you got your own island you're able to build your own attractions and the dinosaurs would escape and you had to round them up and they would eat people uh, this is why I bought PS2 and this this was just brilliant. I really enjoyed this game uh, next is a God of War 2 everybody knows God of War that sounded a bit empty this is enough uh, God of War 2 I'm gonna go a bit quicker through games now because I have a lot to go through and time is limited so a God of War 2 hack and slash very good game Spider-Man 2 if you never played this you are missing out it was one of the best games ever to come out on the PS2 and the swinging was absolutely incredible um, it's just like the newest Spider-Man nowadays uh, but this was back on the PS2 era and this was the best Spider-Man to rule them all. Next is another classic RPG from back in the era, Star Oceans to the End of Time. Um, another Square Enix game. Uh, this is probably one of the best Star Oceans there is out there. Um, there is an updated version of this which is out now, uh, remastered. Yep, now I do have that as well. Uh, that's in the PS4 collection. Uh, very good game, yeah, so Star Ocean. Next, we're going to look at Project Zero. Now, this is a horror game uh, where you feud it in first-person mode and you had to attack monsters with a camera. Uh, you see some creepy monsters up here. Uh, yeah, very scary game back in the day, that was. Next, uh, a sequel to Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. This is the third game. Uh, I think I have the other one somewhere. Uh, I'm looking, can't find it, but yeah, uh, more Prince of Persia, can't really go wrong, fantastic game as well. Next is a fighting game, I don't have many of these, but Soul Calibur 3, not the best Soul Calibur, the best Soul Calibur came out on the GameCube because it had Link from The Legend of Zelda, is that the fourth game? Yeah, I think so, that was the fourth game, but Soul Calibur 3, yeah, <coughs> this is a fun arcade action game, uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all, um, wish they made more of these. Or are they making more? I don't know. Namco. Uh, next is a Kelowna 2. Uh, this game is just basically a platformer. As you can see, this game belongs to Choices uh, Video Rental. Uh, from back in the day, I think they were closing down when I bought it or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, simple platformer. It has been remade. There is a new version out now. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, next, we're going to look at is very much what to find a PS2. Shadow of the Colossus. Basically, you're this little kid and you have to kill these 13 monsters, is it? I can't remember. Uh, does it sound like that? Can't remember how many monsters you have to kill, but you've got to climb up them, hit their weak points, and bring them down. This uh, was very much uh, one of the greatest games out there. Still is. Uh, and there is a remake which came out on a PS4. So. If you fancy the sounds of that, go and have a look at it, and uh, you won't be disappointed. <coughs> Next up is uh, Darkwing. I won't say very much about this. This used the game track, which is um, supposed to be motion control. It was crap. Uh, music 3000. Uh, now, this is what you used back in the day if you wanted to make any music. Um, you could just load it onto your PS2, uh, build some songs, put some uh, tracks in the background, bass beats, or whatever it is. I haven't played these games for ages, so uh, and then put it on a memory disc and you could give it to your friends or whatever you wanted to do with it. So, yeah, not a bad game. <coughs> Next is uh, another classic. This is the second one, and I do have the first one somewhere. At least I have all of them now on the PS4 anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. Everybody waits so long for this game to come out after the first one. Basically, if Square Enix and Disney got together, what would it be? It would be Square Enix and Disney getting together. Um, complicated storylines and everything else. Uh, and it's had so many different versions of this and spin-offs. And the story is so complicated nowadays. Uh, you need a whole guide just for the story. Uh, but yeah, uh, Pick Out is a very good game. Very excellent. Next is Burnout Revenge. Uh, yeah, Burnout Friend, more Burnout. Uh, yeah, it's a fine game. <coughs> That's it, never more. Just, just more Burnout on that one. Next up, Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarding. Uh, so yeah, just like Tony Hawk's or Matt Hoffman, Sean Palmer's got his own Pro Snowboarding game, and I think he only got the one. 
So basically, if you played any of the Tony Hawk's game, it's exactly the same set you're on a snowboard. Next, Tomb Raider Legends. So for this, uh, Edios and who is that? Crystal Dynamics decided to uh, reboot the game uh, and turned out Tomb Raider. Yeah, it was a fine game for the time. It was uh, fun and fine. Uh, but they did come out with a better one, which I will get to later. Next up, this is the first person, and it's Killzone. Now, this was another first person that completely wowed people back in the day. This was um, <coughs> just amazing. The graphics were all good. If I remember rightly, the controls were a bit funky on it. Uh, can I find the controls quickly? Yeah, it was left hand out move, and I don't think the, the right button just zoomed. I don't think you could look around right now. Let me see. There was something wrong with that, if I remember rightly. When I went back to it to play it, there was something wrong, but uh, very good game. If you haven't played it, you missed out. The next one we're going to look at is Mark Eco's Getting Up. I believe he's a graffiti in, a graffitier in real life, and this was a game I don't know why I bought it. Um. Perhaps a magazine just said it was cool, it looked good. Uh, you could do parkour, I think, on this and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, never really played it. Uh, Mark Eco's Getting Up Contents Under Pressure. Do you need a longer title, Atari? Yeah. yeah, it was fine. Uh, so, another Tony Hawk's uh, Project 8. This uh, game really just went back to basics on Tony Hawk's without going over the top. Uh, yeah, fun game. Now this one is a very much classic. Grand Theft Auto 3, where it all started when it went to 3D. Um, there was just such big hype about this back in the day. And for good reason, open world where you could nick any car, shoot anybody you wanted, and all that stuff. Yeah, you know what Grand Theft Auto is. Can't go wrong. Uh, next is another racing game. So we'll take a look at Moto GP3. Uh, basically, uh, racing bikes. Uh, it's the official game of the Moto GP, uh, done by Nanco. And yeah, the controls were fine, and everything else was like that. But, uh, nothing wrong with that game. Next, we're going to look at is Spyro: uh, Dawn of the Dragon. I bought this secondhand, so it looked a bit battered. I think it might look a bit better on camera. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, these were some uh, free spin-offs after the original, uh, where they made Spyro darker and all that uh, platformer. Sort of game, so, uh, it was fine, it was fine. Uh, next up, no mention needed, Grand Auto San Andreas. Um, yeah, just an amazing game. That's all I need to say about it. Do not buy the remake. It's crap. Right, the next one, I don't know why I picked this. I think I picked this up in a charity shop. Um, yeah, because it was 99p. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Yeah, I, I haven't played this one. I just picked it because it was 99p at the time. Uh, just looks like a normal fighting game. Uh, not too sure whether it's any good or not. So, Next is a classic reboot. I picked this up for 99p as well because I didn't have it. Uh, the box is a bit... <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. I get a new box, but this is Alone in the Dark. The new Nightmare, the reboot. Excuse me. Yeah, a horror game. I didn't play this one either. Uh, I hear it's alright. Yeah, better than most of the Lone Dark games, the newer ones, so. Hold on a uh, Quick sip of water. There we go. Right, now the next two games we're going to look at is Resident Evil Outbreak and Resident Evil Outbreak 2. Thank you for falling over, both you. So, basically. Uh, if you've not heard of these, these are the Resident Evil multiplayer games. Now the PS2 could do online capabilities and um, Capcom bought these two out. I haven't played them. You can play them single player. Um, I've bought them recently. I bought them second hand. Uh, yeah, I heard they're alright. So I'll try them out someday. Take these away. Down there. <coughs> right, next we're going to look at another classic by Capcom. Uh, Onimusha 3. What if Resident Evil was a bit more hack and slash and starred a Japanese warrior? You would get Onimusha. Uh, Onimusha 3 is the best of the lot. Uh, it starred that Frenchman there, Jean Arino. Uh, very good game, yeah. 
Uh, we go around hacking and slashing demons, if you can see down there. I don't know. <coughs> Next one is from the Spyro Trilogy. This is a new beginning, so this was the first one. Uh, yeah, it was fine. It was just a platforming game. Yeah, it was, it was fine. It was fine. That's it. And the second one, which is uh, the Eternal Night. Next, we're looking at Downhill Domination. Uh, which is more just off-roading with a bike uh, by Code Masters. It was fun. I spent hours on this one just riding down the hills. Um, yeah, this was a really good game when it came out. I really enjoyed this one. Just simple, fun, ride down a hill, do a load of stupid tricks there, like SSX sort of thing. Uh, next, we're looking at is the first Just Cause. Uh, these games are still going today, I believe. Or at least it goes up to number four, I think number four or five uh, yeah uh, when it came out this was fun you could uh, fly all over the place you used a grappling hook to reach onto things and pull you towards it so you could jump in and do that big explosion blah 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 yeah good game next project snowblind i picked this up cheap as you can see 397 from whatever uh it's first person it's bland Bland from what I can remember. Yeah. Oh. Of course, another classic snowboarding game. SSX Free. It's tricky. It's trick to roll around to ride around that rail on time. Yeah, uh, SSX Tricky. You rode down a mountain. You did ridiculous tricks. Excellent game. Uh, Transformers. Uh, this was a very good game. Well, this game doesn't work now. So I'm a bit disappointed. You played as Transformers. And you went around doing transform me things. It was fine. Um, so, before there was Red Dead, we had Gun. That's right, from Neversoft and Activision. Cowboy game where you rode around doing cowboy things. That's right. It was all right. It was an all right game. Before Shadow of the Colossus came out, you had Ico, a little puzzle game where you played as a person dragging around another human while you tried to escape. Um, it's made the whole game you saw puzzles and stuff like that. It's a very good game. There was. Was there a remake of this one? Um, I cannot remember. I don't think there was, but. My memory is going, so. Doesn't matter. Next, an all time classic Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, if you've never played any of the Metal Gears, you're missing out. This was one of the best ones on PlayStation 2. After Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons... No, not Sons of the Patriot. That's Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, Metal Gear Solid 2, what was it called? You'd think I would have it. I don't have it. Oh, dear. Oh, well, anyway. Metal Gear Solid 3, a very excellent game. Played a snake, ran around, do things. Right. Now, this was the best Tomb Raider game out on uh, PS2. And it was Tomb Raider Anniversary, basically a remake of the first game. Um, this came after Tomb Raider, whatever it was called, I forget. And this is the best Tomb Raider game, uh, which was on the PS2. Uh, highly recommend this if you haven't played it. It's still great today. This is, of course, the Collector's Edition. Oh, nice, nice looking the Collector's Edition. So next, we're going to look at one of my favourite games of all time, Akami. Basically, this was like Souda, but you played as a wolf, and uh, you went around uh, killing yokai. Uh, so, and it had a really nice art style to it. So, if you like that kind of thing, uh, I suggest checking this out. It is definitely one of the best games out there. Next, quickly, we're going to be looking at MTX Motocross. Basically, um... This by Activision who did, uh, again, uh, the same. <coughs> Bloody hell. It's getting hot. Uh, MX is basically like Tony Hawk's, but you're on MTX now. So if that, if that made any sense, I know what I just said. So uh, and there we are. Very fun game that was. Same again. They came out with one on wakeboarding as well. Uh, and leash with Sean Murray. Uh, yeah, these these only got one per. Aha. I'm talking about Doc Hat. Part two. More of the same. Yeah. 
So, we're going with uh, the Resident Evil spin-off. I say Resident Evil spin-off because that's where this game came from. Devil May Cry 3, one of the hardest games on the PS2. Uh, at least this edition was. I think Dante's Awakening. Uh, what's the other one harder? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This was a very good hack and slash beam up. Recommend it. Next, we're going to have a look at a very much classic uh, from the creator of Metal Gear Solid. Sony of the Enders, where you're in a giant robot and you go around shooting things. Uh, very much. If you haven't watched the anime, the anime is well worth watching and this is where it came from. Next, an all-time classic, Need for Speed Underground. Uh, when this came out, uh, everybody was hyped about this. You could build your cars, you could put different trims on it and uh, paint it however you wanted. Take it around your mate on a memory card and uh, have a race. Very excellent game. The franchise hasn't been doing too well recently because they keep wanting to put... <coughs> keep wanting to put cutscenes in it, so uh, they've made it crap. Quickly go through this before I die or something. Manhunt. Uh, go around killing a load of people in this television game sort of thing. Uh, it was banned in most countries. Uh, but it was actually a very good game. Next, we're on to Scale Electrics. Well, Groove Rider, slot car racing if you're American. Uh, yeah, so you just played the car, you pressed the trigger, and you went around the track. Exciting stuff. Next, we're going to take a look at Airblade. Basically, you uh, went around an open world, uh, air blading, hoverboard, did a few tricks, but there was like a story to this one as well. You can only do a few tricks, it was like nothing special or anything like that. Yeah, was, I remember having a fun time with this. Next, going into the classic of all races, Gran Turismo 3. Well, realistic races anyway. Uh, if you don't know what Gran Turismo 3, basically you just drive around real world locations and some non-real world locations. Uh, driving famous cars. Uh, graphics were standard at the time. Next, we're going to look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Rose. So... I bought this because it's actually based on the War of the Roses. Uh, I know it says it's got three games cards, so they're not in there anymore. They're, they're gone. But yeah, this ba you go based on War of the Roses, so a little bit weird. There we are. Nice to have a bit of history. Right, this is another classic, Drakengard by Square Enix, and they did a four game, three or four games of these, and I think there was a spin-off to it. I forget, uh, what was the spin? Near Automata. Near was the spin-off. That was it uh, to this game. But yeah, it was hack and slash. You went around. You could uh, play as a dragon and. Human and just hack and slash. Track and guard. <coughs> now, if you want to know horror, you buy Silent Hill. So this is the collection. So this has uh, two, three, and four in. And four is known as The Room. It isn't very good. But yeah, if you want good horror, I recommend Silent Hill 1, uh, Silent Hill, 1 Silent Hill 2, and Silent Hill 3. Yeah, limited edition Silent Hill collection. Look, there we are. Silent Hill 2, 3, and The Room. The not very good one. And I do have Silent Hill, the PS1. Next is a uh, real world go for that game track thing. That uh, crap. Aha, here it is. The original Kingdom Hearts, the game that started it all. Uh, yeah, uh, play this game, it's amazing. And next, what if Sonic the Hedgehog had uh, guns? Well, we got Shadow for that. So basically, this is Sonic Hedgehog. You play a Shadow and you run around with guns. How very exciting. No, it wasn't. As you can see at the back there. Exciting. Anyway, and that is my game collection. I think there most probably is a couple more, but I can't be bothered to find them. Uh, I have been Dark Wolf Art. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again. Goodbye.